Okay, let's uh, take a look at a sample irrigation plan. <clears throat> this is not necessarily a real plan, but it's a sample to try to illustrate uh, how to read an irrigation plan. And then eventually in our design course, we teach you how to put them together. So uh, one thing you're always looking for is the property line. And so in this plan, it's in dash lines. And then you're looking for any buildings or any hardscape. And in this case, we have what looks like a parking lot here, and then a building of some sort. And then clearly we have walkways. And then uh, presumably this is the street. So we have a building, we have landscaped area, and we have a parking area, and we have some landscaped areas over here. So uh, there can be some variation when you look at these different plans, but there's enough uniformity for there to be standards. This plan is missing a few key things. One thing that it's missing is a compass. So you need to know what direction is north so that you know your orientation. The other thing it's missing is a scale. So like uh, one inch equals how many feet? We need the scale in order to um, collect all of the data that we need. And then the final piece that it's missing is a legend. The legend is the guide that tells you uh, each of these symbols and what they mean. So uh, let's, let's kind of break this down here. Um, and we can start with the place where the water hits the landscape with the emitters and the sprinkler heads. So in this case, uh, what we're looking at appears to be all spray heads. These are pop-ups, spray heads. And we have a variety of configurations. Uh, typically, we have quarter, half and full and so what each of these are is how much of a circle is uh, the radius being thrown and uh, you can choose a couple different ways to represent them oftentimes a quarter is just simply a little pie shape The half is a half circle, and then the full is a circle. In this case, they are octagons. And uh, we see the entire circle drawn. And then we see, and then we see the designator uh, labeled. So uh, we can count all of these up and become aware of uh, where the radius is going to be. We can check for coverage. So say this quarter here, we can assume it's going to have a throw kind of like that. And then we'll have a half with a throw like that. And we've got some nice head-to-head -head coverage right in this area. You don't draw the coverage on the plan, but when you're designing it, oftentimes you do to help you make sure you're not missing anything. And so then uh, it's difficult to see, but we have the sprinkler heads are connected with a pipe. That pipe is labeled three quarter inch. So we have our pipe. The 
labels are lightly drawn here, but they are there. Whether it's three quarter inch, one half inch, one inch, you want to make sure your pipe is listed and also labeled. If we knew the legend, then we could take a ruler and we could measure and literally determine how much pipe we need. So each of these sprinkler heads uh, goes back to an automatic control valve. And I'll just put Pipe. And so the valve if it's electrical or automatic. And here it's another octagon. But oftentimes it is uh, a circle as well. Now a proper plan would have this labeled and drawn. If it's hand drawn, it will be with a template. <clears throat> if it is computer drawn, it'll obviously very be very clear and easy to read. So the valves are these here and very quickly we could do a count we could say we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten valves As you can see very easily easily you can find the valves and you can count them and then the valves are connected to mainline. The previous pipe is called lateral line. And then we'll have mainline. On this plan, it's indicated as a thick dotted line. So we'll indicate that, but oftentimes it's literally just a double thick line. Hand drawn, you would just make it a little bit thicker, but a computer can uh, double the thickness. So then we can see the main line and we can, it's a little bit difficult to differentiate it from the property line because everything's dashed. There's our main line. And then we can see a few other things. Um, we have a backflow device. And that's indicated with This symbol here, sometimes that's crossed like a little bow tie. That's your backflow device. And then right here, we have a little box that says M. That's our POC, point of connection. You always want to make sure you have point of connection, backflow, main lines, valves, lateral lines, and sprinkler heads. A few other interesting features. You see this dotted line here and this dotted line here. Uh, we also have dotted line there and here. This is indicating a sleeve where the pipe is going to run under some hardscape. So we've got a sleeve here, here, here. 
here and here. So in order to get the water to these areas, it's going to be run underground through a pipe, within a pipe or a sleeve that uh, goes under the concrete. This whole plan is important for the designer to be able to create, but also for the installer to be able to read. You need to know what this means and, and what it looks like. So uh, the next thing that a person would do is they would take a look at this and they would take off all of the parts. So literally have a table and you would count up how many sprinkler heads do you need how many quarters, how many halves, how many valves, how many feet of pipe of various length, and you'll come up with your shopping list, and you'll be able to have the entire list uh, calculated out for your installation purposes. Interestingly, uh, oftentimes they will show a controller. So, and where that is located. Usually it's just a little square with a C. They'll tell you where the controller's located. And if it's a house, sometimes it's even inside. But what they typically don't put on the plan is the wire. So the wire that runs from the controller to the valves is not typically included. Um, many times the wire just runs in the same trench as the main line. But also, if it's low voltage wire, which it typically is, uh, you don't need to bury it too deep, and many times the wire could just run straight across. And so, uh, it all depends on uh, how it gets set up and what is most cost effective, where the wire path goes. But that's not necessarily included on this plan because it's not as important. The wire can kind of go uh, where it needs to go without interfering with the rest of this plan. So there you go, that is a sample irrigation plan and just a brief overview of some of the symbols and parts and what to look for when you are reading it.